Well, good morning, Pipers. Welcome back to the Bass Piper channel. And, um, hey, guys, I just want to get on here and uh, take just a couple of minutes before I go mow some grass uh, and do all my landscape chores around the house. Um, I just want to get on and let you all know how much I have enjoyed this little stand well pipe that I showed on my last video. And um, I wanted to, uh, I was going to make a maiden voyage with this, but I went ahead the other day and made one. And uh, it smokes like a champ. And uh, now this one isn't a, a filtered, it's non-filtered. But I do appreciate all the response that I got uh, from the ash hole and the comments you guys made uh, about Stanwell's. And uh, I knew Stan Wells had been around for a long time, but like I said, I just didn't see them uh, much of the Pipers smoking them uh, in the YTPC. So I said, well, man, I wonder what's up with those. But I saw one at the Danish Pipe Shop that I liked, and it was this one here. And uh, I also found out that... Uh, Steve, thank you, by the way, so much, buddy, for making a video uh, basically dedicated to me uh, on the Stanwells. Um, Bear Wolf, I think, is your new channel, and Miss Kathy. Uh, I still got you down as uh, Celtic Piper Steve, and so, uh, but uh, love seeing you and Miss Kathy on that video, <laughs> and it was so funny watching Miss Kathy in the background getting you straight on Stanwell instead of Stanley. and uh, But I know the feeling, man. If you work with Stanley tools and, and, and tape measures, that gets in your head. But uh, Bass Piper's not smoking anything today. I just want to get on here and show you this pipe again and uh, thank all the ones that made the comments. And uh, Ed, Armchair Piper, thank you so much for your input as well. I'm going to take a look uh, at the Danish pipe shop, uh, sometime I, I have to stop my, um, my pad disease for right now. Bass Piper has been going a little bit overboard with his pipe collection. So, uh, we're going to hold off for a little while, but the next time that I go out into the deep, <laughs> I'm going to take a look at that number 11, uh, Stanwell. I saw it and, uh, you're right. The one that Steve had that he was showing on the video looked almost like a number 11. I don't know if that was a number 11 that Steve had, but that's a nice-looking pipe, man. Steve, both of your pipes are nice-looking, buddy. And uh, But Ed's getting me turned on to this number 11 by Stanwell. And uh, and I think you can get them filtered because I want to go after the, uh, the, another filtered pipe. Um, I smoke both filtered and unfiltered, but I do lean towards when I can more of the filtered. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to get on guys just for a few minutes and, uh, let you know this pipe, this pipe is a beautiful pipe. That, that bowl is just, is just a night for a factory made pipe. Let me get my fingers all out the way of it. And I forgot when I showed this pipe last time, let me turn it around. I had my I had my S, if I can get my S on there for staying well, I had it turned around with the stem and it was upside down, but that's the way it's supposed to look. And, um, but a nice looking little pipe. And I know it came in a little smaller than what I normally smoke. And not so much, not so much the length of it, the length of it, but just the bulkiness of it, you know. But these little pipes, they're nice, and they're easier to clinch, com common sense. But um, but it was so neat to get this up because this is the type size pipes my son likes, and uh, my son smokes a pipe from time to time. He likes the little uh, rope, uh, not rope, but ROP, I think, R-O-P-P, -P, ROP pipes because he likes the thinner bowls and just the small he's more of a smaller profile man and uh he's not hunky and chunky like his daddy and so uh 
He said, Daddy, it was bigger pipes. Man, look looked like the pipes were bigger than my face. And so he's very into making sure his clothes, his hat, his pipe fits the profile. You know, well, Dad, you know, it's, hey, man, if I like the pipe, it can be that big. There you go. You know, with him, everything's got to be just proportioned right to his frame. But that's okay, you know. But I called him up and I said, Brandon, I said, I think you're going to like these kinds of pipes. I'm going to show you the one. He's coming over this weekend. I'm going to show him this little pipe right here. And uh, I told him, I said, I think you're really going to like the smaller Stanwells. And so uh, he likes the other pipes. He just thinks they're just that it, they don't fit his face and they're too big for him. But... Uh, but anyway, guys, I just wanted to get on and say, hey, this pipe smokes like a dream. I definitely recommend Stanwells. If you've never tried a Stanwell, get you one. Uh, if nothing more, add one to your collection. That's basically what I did. And um, I wanted to get a little bulldog. And uh, I didn't know how they smoked. But I tell you, all I have gotten on the ash hole comments uh, from everybody that has them uh, has really given them great reviews and so I had to go out there and just go ahead and try it you know and uh, but a great smoking pipe you can't go wrong with the stand wells I, I think these guys have been out for a long long time and uh, you just don't see many of them or hear about it more than you hear about the Savinelli's and the Rattrays and the uh, Peterson's you know, for for more of your manufactured pipes. Stand well, he just kind of sits out on the back burner. And so I got thinking, I go, man, what's up with stand wells? You know, um, they all were out in that same time frame of pipes when pipes were really, you know, in the 50s and the 40s and the 60s and, you know, 70s, when their pipes were really out there. I said, man, surely they were good made pipes but you just don't hear of many of the guys. Or if you got them, you just don't talk about them. And so uh, we're all hung up now with our, with our, our Boswells and our, our artisan pipes and all the different ones. And I didn't know for a long time, guys, uh, that Dunhill was a factory pipe. I thought Dunhill's was this guru of a, uh, you know, artisan type of, you know, thing. I mean, when you see the price tags on a Dunwell, a, you feel like, man, what in the world? A Dunwell, a Dunhill, what uh, what in the world, man? And they're manufactured, machine-made type pipes for 600 and 1200 And I was like, oh, my gosh. No, I don't think so. Um, if I'm going to pay that kind of money, I want somebody's hands on it and in it from the top, from the button all the way to the bowl, uh, making this thing. And it better be standing tall with as much perfection as a human can put in it, uh, for $1,200 and $1,500 for a Dunhill. No, uh, sorry. Those, the guys that own them, Hey man. If your pockets are deep enough and you want them, that's great. Base pipers isn't so, uh, and I even if mine was, I just don't see that in a machine made pipe. But anyway, that's my belly button opinion, and this is my channel, so I have a right to say what I think sucks. But it's a thing where Dunhill, good pipe, I'm sure, but for the money, nah. Um, I'll take a Stanwell. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't mean to get off on that rant, guys. But anyway, I mean, if I'm going to drop that, man, I'm going to buy me a Jason Montan pipe and, uh, you know, uh, an Eric Weaver or uh, an LCS pipe, Lennon Call and Simon, uh, over a Dunhill any day. But that's just me. Okay, I can be me. And so anyway, guys, just want to get on here and let you know this thing smokes great. And um, thank you all for your input. Hey, thank you for the subscriptions that I'm getting over on Rumble. And let me say this too real quick. Um, Ethan, Parsimonious Piper, I know you'll probably see this video. Thank you, buddy, for doing that video to help the guys trying to get over to Rumble. And listen, uh, I liked what uh, St. David Pipes said. David over at St. David's Pipes. Um, 
Rumble is not the end all, be all, end all. Okay, we know it's a small platform. We know that anything can go south there too. But the cool thing about this thing with Rumble, as Bass Piper's always said, forget all of that. Just know that you can get over there and have freedom of speech right now. That's the biggest thing. And you don't have to worry about, like, they're doing with the cigar industry and some of the pipe. And I know Jason uh, Moton got slapped, too, with some stuff. And, and Jason, I don't blame you, buddy. That, it's aggravating. Um, I saw your video. And, I, hey, man, I agree with you, bud. But get over there on Rumble, man, and just sink your mess just so wet. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Anything that you put on YouTube will automatically just go over there and uh, pick you up a few subscribers over there. It's not as big. It's not a big platform, but you're not going over there for that. And I'm like Ethan. I don't know with this monetary thing. I don't know if everybody's got to be monetized or not, whether you want to be or you don't. I don't know if you have any control over that, just how that works. But I'm not worrying about all that. My stuff's not big enough, and my subscriber base ain't big enough, and I'm even worrying about that. Even if it is monetized, I ain't going to get nothing. What am I going to go get a piece of uh, a penny, a penny or two to buy some bubble gum? I mean, that's you know, um, that's immaterial to me. The main thing was is my freedom of speech. This is America. Well, this is why we're Americans. I ought to be able to get on there within reason. I understand certain things. That, but I ought to be able to, when it comes to a, 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 a lousy pipe, I don't mean that in a bad way, a, 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 a community of pipe pipers with some tobacco, and we are getting our hands slapped over stupid mess and political mess and garbage. It's time to do something. And so if we've got another outlet, and I'm sure there's about five or six or seven other social media things out there, platforms. I don't know anything about them because I'm not that tech savvy, nor do I want to be, to be honest with you. Uh, in fact, I'm trying to get the older I get, the more tech out of my life. I've already told my wife, the day I retire from the church, um, the, cell, the uh, smartphone's going in the trash. And I'm finding me a flip phone. And if anybody wants to contact the base piper, you'll call me. I told her that. I even told my church that. I said, don't text me. Don't email me. It won't be answered. I'm not going to succumb to all this mess. I know I've got certain things I've got to do right now just because I'm in it. But... If God gives me breath and life to see my retirement and gives me some years in my retirement, we're going back to the old flip phone and we're going back to what God intended us to do, and that is to talk, not type, and not dictate. And every time you dictate, you got to check it because you got to worry about what it dictated that you're getting ready to send out so that you can go back and erase everything and redo it. I could be on the phone to you and in two minutes tell you everything it took me 20 minutes to text you. And then by the time we get into two rounds of back and forth on texting, the other person ghosts me. I'll say, yeah, that pipe was a nice pipe, man. Where, where do you get that? I hear it three days later. Where the heck did you go? You just, you just texted me. You ask me a question, I'm responding, and then they go. <laughs> I got zero tolerance for that, guys. I'm sorry, man. I just am not into that mess. And uh, when I could have been on the phone, asked you three questions, been done, hung up, and go mow the grass. Now I'm waiting three days for you to answer one question of mine. No. Sorry. Got to go. Got to go. How low can you go? Got to go. This mess is going. The technology and the garbage, because I'm going to tell you something too, it's also ruining us. No more communication. We're all in personal, basically, and I'm talking about society. Where nobody wants to talk to nobody. 
We're screening everything. Look at what we've become. You know? Oh, yeah, that's Bass Piper on the caller ID. Yeah, don't answer the phone. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay. You know, it, it's just, that's the preacher. Don't answer the phone. Look, don't even answer the door. Don't answer. And what's so funny, I'll stand outside the door and hear him talking right through the windows. You, you know, it's not soundproof that much. They're in the house talking to him. But, uh, and I'm just saying that for laughs and giggles. But, you know, it, it's the truth. It's the truth. But anyway, how in the world did I get on that? Um, but anyway, yeah, when I retire, we're going, to a, we're going back to a flip phone. And I guess I won't talk to many people till I die after that because nobody will call, I guess. Well, that might be good, too. I won't be bothered. But, um, but we need to get back to the basics of life a little bit. And uh, one of them is to enjoy your pipe. Basics of life. Enjoy your pipe. But anyway, guys, I got to go mow some grass. I got to get all my honeydews done for my, before my lady gets home and get all the landscaping done and, and all that. And um, got the wash going. I'm telling you, man, I'm just a, I'm just a Mr. Mom today. And uh, got to finish studying up for my sermon for Sunday. So uh, we just got it all going on, man, plus trying to make a video. But, hey, you guys have a great weekend. Guys, love you. Love your support. Thank you for all the comments. And I didn't mean to get off on this rant with the, uh, with the fun with the phones, but uh, hey, you know where I'm coming from. Most of you guys do. But look, you guys have a great weekend, and uh, if we don't see you the next week, uh, have a pipe. Relax. Have a pipe. And don't forget the blessings that God gives you each and every day. We'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.